Okay, so this will be a uh, teardown of a Faxtron DX50 cabinet x-ray system. This is a unit that I acquired on eBay. Unfortunately, it was broken in shipment. Uh, the x-ray tube was fractured, and also the main power supply is bad. So it's pretty much uh, beyond recovery in terms of getting it running for x-raying circuit boards. However, um, it does still have some salvageable components, so I'll show you those and I'll uh, show you the teardown. So in this unit, there's an x-ray generator up in the top section, and then there is an x-ray sensor in the bottom section. The sensor is a uh, Hamamatsu flat panel detector. When the system is run, uh, the x-ray beam will come down from the top, through the sample, and through a carbon fiber window. Now uh, carbon fiber is used because carbon has a low x-ray cross-section, and it's also structurally rigid, so it's a good uh, material for an x-ray window for preventing damage to the more fragile sensor, which would be located underneath. So the unit has an enclosed, um, so it's, it's an enclosed cabinet x-ray system. It will not actually turn on unless you have the safety door closed, and that just rotates around the x-ray chamber like this, and closes, and it has a door interlock. So with this unit, as I mentioned, uh, the main DC power supply is bad. Right now I've bypassed that and I'm just running it off of <coughs> a remote 5 volt DC system to just power up the logic boards. Um, I've also dismantled a few components in advance from this video. So there is one, there's a bottom cover that's removed and that does have an interlock switch which is also um, now open, so if you reach down there and actually push the interlock switch manually, you'll see that the the door light will come on, the door is closed, and the ready light would come on. Uh, for this particular unit, because the tube's destroyed and the power supply is inoperative, there's no actual um, chance that this thing can produce x-rays anymore. It's pretty mo much um, irreparable. However, one of the things we can see and I'll demonstrate is uh, this particular unit, unlike some of the older Faxatron X-ray cabinet systems, does require a remote computer to operate. So if you press the start button, you'll hear a click, which is a safety relay on the inside closing. Then it will open automatically and the X-ray lights will not come on, will not attempt to turn on the X-ray. What it's doing is the, the logic control board is sent, it has a serial port in the back and it's sending out um, the character um, uh, X uh, requesting for the computer to confirm that it, it can turn the x-ray on and it's ready. The computer will then send back uh, the character C, which will confirm that. The x-ray generator will turn on for the pre-programmed uh, pre exposure time and at the pre-programmed energy. It'll take the x-ray and then It'll send back a character um, to confirm that the x-ray is complete and then shut down the x-ray generator. You can program the x-ray energy from the front panel uh, from a PKV of 10 kV to 35 kV. Uh, this is a, a DC excited x-ray tube, not an AC excited x-ray tube, so that's a 35 kV DC on the anode. So those are the basic capabilities of this particular unit, and I'll just disconnect this power supply. And now let's have a look at what's inside. Okay. So the top cover is held on by some screws in the back. I've removed those already. So this pulls back a little, lifts up a little, and then slides off. Now inside there is there's several boards. See there, there's the logic control board which is right behind the front panel. This contains the CPU and sends control signals to the x-ray control board which is here. This controls filament current, uh, filament emission via the control grid and also anode voltage which is which it basically has an analog programming line to this high voltage power supply, 
which runs into the x-ray tube which is located here. The logic control board is linked to the serial port in the back and the serial port is uh, here and then there's a USB port for the sensor. So serial ports located here and you'll send it, those control characters over the serial port at uh, 9600 baud. Also in the back here is the main power supply. This is bad on this unit. It has plus 5 volts as well as plus or minus 12 volts and then it has an adjustable uh, voltage output. I don't know of the don't know the exact voltage that adjustable output is programmed to. Also see in the back it has one of the interlock switches so <coughs> can't be powered up unless the back cover is closed. Now looking inside the x-ray tube enclosure so this is a steel box. Now the tube was broken in shipment so I just left that in there for now. But you'll see the, uh, so it's a steel uh, box and it has some lead shielding on the top and sides and then it has a fan and then this part comes down over the fan to prevent any x-ray leakage out there. Here is what's left of the tube. I've disconnected the anode from the high voltage supply but it's just a uh, banana jack like installation which is positioned in the center of this plastic bushing. Um, it's a molybdenum anode tube. Looks like maybe 30 degree cut angle. It's cut on the left right axis of the image sensor. Um, it's raised into a copper mount. On the other side of the x-ray tube there's a cathode so it's a micro focus tube so there's a very very small um, cathode and then some uh, some electron focusing optics and then one of and then this is uh, likely in uh, um, one of the control grids and this can be uh, biased via the control board so digging a little further into the unit there's also an, an interlock switch on the top for the x-ray tube enclosure. There is no interlock switch for the main cover um, which can be removed. So that can be removed, the main cover and the x-ray tube can still be turned on. This is for doing things such as monitoring the filament and uh, biases and you can have the te their test points on the x-ray control board. This interlock switch does shut down, would shut down, inhibit the x-ray generator from turning on if the x-ray enclosure is opened. This obviously should never be bypassed for an actual operational unit when it's energized. You'll notice that it is a glass envelope tube, although the cathode cut angle would provide some shielding. Uh, basically there's no shielding on the x-ray tube whatsoever, so <clears throat> once the x-ray tube turns on it will radiate x-rays upward as well as downward. Looking further in, I've removed the screws from this. This is the beryllium window from the x-ray tube. It's, um, it's actually fairly thick, a fairly thick beryllium window. It's um, 32 thousandths of an inch, uh, 30, basically a 32nd of an inch. So it's structurally very rigid. It would be pretty difficult to damage the beryllium window. Um, at that thickness, it'll have 50% transmission at 5 keV x-rays and 90% transmission at 10 keV. So that's, and then there's the minimum x-ray energy on that the power supply will go down to is 10 keV. So you can get to fairly low energies with this unit. There's an additional mounting plate as well, which just holds that tube window assembly and then the whole tube is just mounted by the tube assembly. So if you look at the tube itself you would have had a fairly substantial overhanging mass which is likely how this got um, destroyed in shipping. So if you're buying one of these on eBay make sure the seller packs it well with several inches of padding on all sides of the unit or you'll likely end up <coughs> with a broken x-ray tube but I got a partial discount on this because of the damage and got to keep the unit so that's all well and good. Um, looking under 
the um, x-ray tube mount, we can see two switches here, and those are the door interlock switches. So as you see, as the door rotates shut, those two, those two switches here and here will close. Uh, they're in series, basically dually redundant interlocks for the door. Um, so that's pretty much a complete overview of the x-ray generator itself. Now, mind you, this unit has two main parts, which are pretty much independent. They only share a power supply. They do not talk to each other um, electronically. There's the x-ray unit, which is controlled over the serial interface, and then the x-ray sensor, which is controlled over the USB interface. So for that, I'll put this cover back on so I can turn it upside down. You'll hear some broken glass rattling around in there. And I've already removed the x-ray sensor from this particular unit. And you can see there's the bottom of the carbon fiber window and there are several mounting bolts. Um, I actually do have the sensor over here. All right, so here is the sensor unit. Clean up some of that. Okay. So the X-ray sensor, and here it is, is a uh, Hamamatsu C9730 DK-11. It's interface-wise and operation-wise identical to the DK-10, except the active X-ray detection area is offset a little inward on the DK-10 